Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to do some planting along the west side of the house on both sides of the lane. So we've got two different types of perennial, one type of shrub, two of which, so two of these plants, I'm just filling in areas where we already have some planted. And one of them I'm creating new little spots. This is what we've got to work with today. So we've got sprinter boxwood is our shrub. We're going to be finishing off this hedge today. There's a gap at the end. We stopped at one point because we were going to do something different uh, and then have decided to keep going. So I'm going to fill in the gap today with those. These are a zone five through nine and that's what we have planted on this other side as well. So last year these sprinter boxwoods, well all of our boxwoods were afflicted with spider mites terribly bad. Sprinters seem to take it the worst um, of all the different varieties we have in our garden but they've rebounded beautifully um, and they've really created a nice hedge over here. I just got through pruning them, there's Russell. I just trimmed these not long ago, like maybe two weeks ago and just took a little tiny bit off because of all of that spider mite damage. Like there's no spider mites in there still, but the damage from last year, you can still see it if you cut too far into the shrub. So I was very careful with it and they really do look nice. Hey bud, Are you, ready? you want me to come look? Yeah. Okay, quick break to take a look at, I dug out our fog machine Benjamin loves Halloween. He loves all the decorations and stuff, and he is, he's really excited about this machine. <laughs> okay, let's see it. Oh! Right. Oh, you're standing right in the fog's way. Look at that. The fog's shooting right on your legs. One of you guys sent us out some chairs for Benjamin and Samantha. I just unboxed them, so we gotta put them together. I was trying to put them together. You were trying? I think we need to get some tools out. That's pretty cool, dude. I'm gonna keep this open so the fog can escape. If anybody came up on our house right now, they would think it was on fire, dude. For any of you guys who have been watching us long enough, you might remember when we lived in our townhouse, I used to like go all out at Halloween time and just really deck it out. I haven't really done that since we've been in this house, but I still have some of the same decorations. I don't like anything creepy or gross or too scary. I just like the fun stuff, you know, like I can do spiders and little mice and bats and stuff like that. That's about as far as I go. Anyway, this one grows about two to four feet tall and wide, so it makes for a nice smaller hedge. And then we've got Alcamilla mollis. Uh, that's a botanical name. Common name is Lady's Mantle. It's one of my favorite perennials. I uh, just for its versatility, I use it mostly for foliage. It does bloom in this is kind of off season right here but it blooms late spring early summer i mean just masses of the chartreuse color which just brings such a, such a nice cooling element to the spaces that we've got it planted i just love that uh and i do love how the water looks when it collects on the leaves just in little beads it's just the most beautiful thing these grow about 18 inches tall by 18 inches wide um and they are i think hardy down to zone three Nug hardy to nugget 40 yeah crazy. This is also a type you can plan to divide every couple of years because they will kind of, you know, it says 18 inches wide, but the clump will grow. Um, so you can divide it and you'll have plants to move all about your garden, which is kind of nice or share with friends. The thing about this plant, so after it's done blooming in the spring, the leaves will still look really nice. The blooms will look kind of brown. So you think, well, I could just go in and deadhead it. Those leaves look so great and fresh still. Don't let those fresh leaves fool you. Take that whole plant back to the ground. I'll show you why. So I already have some over here. I did not shear these all the way back. I just deadheaded them and this is what happens. <laughs> brown. They're looking kind of brown and crispy at this point. Um, they are a little bit dirty though. No, I thought well, for a second, maybe they had spider mites, but I don't think they do. Yeah, so they do need a good hose down. This really isn't proper representation. Hang on, let's give them a shower quick. Oh, I just see dirty water beating up and falling off these plants. They did, uh, Paul recently mulched this area. It looks so pretty. And that's probably when these got a little bit dirty. Okay, well, it didn't improve them much, but a little bit. Look at how the water looks on their leaves. Ah. Oh. So if you shear these back after they're done blooming in the spring, right now this whole patch would look beautiful and fresh and green still. If you leave those first flush of leaves, it's just too long and too harsh of a season and they'll start looking very tired and worn out and kind of crummy. So, yeah. So definitely, definitely shear them back uh, when they're done blooming that initial bloom set of the season. So we're planting those over here actually because there are some elements I want to repeat along this sidewalk. And those elements are the iris, the ladies mantle. I've got David Austin roses. There are three here. I just planted three in here and there are five down this way. I've also got caryopteris throughout and delphiniums throughout. So we've got more iris right here and 
walking as fast as I can. See, there's delphinium there. And there's a little bit more ladies mantle right here. So my plan is to add just a few groupings along here, probably a good size grouping right in here. And then I was gonna put some here by the iris, but the geranium's kind of giving us that bold leaf. So I think we'll put a patch of them right in here. They're just an awesome one because they can do sun to part sun um, and they can go in any color palette. And they just offer that bold kind of weight in the space. Look at this. Bud, you're filling up the air with fog. Look at that. This is where I'm working. Am I gonna be working in spooky land today? And then we've got Hakanakloa or Japanese forest grass called Areola. Isn't this just so gorgeous? It creates the most beautiful, graceful, soft mounds of grass, and this one takes shade, which is so nice. It can take part sun, but not full sun for sure. Um, this one is a zone five, grows 18 by 18. It also kind of clumps out and it will kind of pop up in the same area you planted. It's not invasive. Like you'll see a little piece of it come up like maybe four inches away from the plant or six inches away and you can dig those up and put them somewhere else or just let them fill in the area. So I planted some over here that I had transplanted from in front of the crab apple tree in our front yard when we ripped up that garden. I transplanted them over here. A couple of them survived. Most of them kind of dwindled away. I didn't get very good root systems on them. So I'm gonna fill in that area. So you can see two of the Japanese forest grass in there. I'm gonna fill in this section right here. I'm so excited. So I've got two flats of it, which means we have 12 plants. So I'm gonna fill in this section. And with the ones we have left, I'm gonna keep going like right back here to that hosta. We just recently planted the geraniums in here. You know, the hookera that we planted in here is kind of making a little bit of a comeback. We lost a few of them. Hookera are just touchy in our area. And then I do have happy news to report here. You remember when we transplanted the acanthus and I just mutilated its root system. We did this not long ago. The entire plant just flopped, clearly. But look, look at all this new growth. I'm just so thrilled. I probably should come in and cut off all this old growth, but it kind of is reminding me that the plant is here. So it's, it's kind of nice to have that indicator. And then while we're over here, let me show you the spot where the boxwoods are going. So they'll start here and they'll go over to the cone. So we're just gonna cruise through here and fill in that section. And I'm just gonna plant right in the middle of the uh, lamium there. I love lamium. I think it's so pretty. And I wouldn't mind if it just spread through this whole area. We did plant some astilbes in here that we had to cut back because they fried. They're all coming back, pushing new growth, but they're kind of small. It's going to be so nice to work over here because we're kind of in the shade. It's a really nice quiet day. You can hear the fountain. There's usually a lot of building noise because, you know, they've always been building around our house since we moved in almost. Um, so there's usually some kind of like roofing or like a nail gun or something going off and it's just so peaceful. I love it. And you guys, we are going to give you a tour of the brick sidewalk new stone wall area soon. We just, we still haven't had a chance there. Um, Benny is researching some cleaner stuff. We need to get it all cleaned. It's still got that like kind of sand layer on the top. So it looks kind of dirty. I really want to show you when it's all kind of buttoned up and cleaned up. And we have to have two pieces of concrete patched by our back kitchen door where big parts of it kind of cracked and broke off. Um, and they kind of, they had to do that in order to get the bricks through. So anyway, we're, we're so close and I have furniture coming. I kind of want to set the whole thing up, show you, kind of like a big reveal moment. All right, guys, so for this project, I'm going to be using a shovel for most of it. I did bring my augers out, but Paul spent so much time mulching over here and it looks so good. I just, I don't want to make a huge mess right on top of his brand new mulch. So we're going to try to be as tidy and clean as we can, use a shovel and just enjoy our time out here. So let's get this done, get them all planted, and then we'll do a little tour.
it all done, let's take a look. Starting with this Hakana Kaloa, isn't that just perfect in here? I mean, it just goes all the way through and the bright yellow variegation just makes it pop. It just glows in this spot. Now this area doesn't receive a ton of light. I mean, this is Helen Von Stein Lambs here, which typically likes full sun and you can see it's doing really well. Um, in the middle of summer when the sun is more upright in the sky, because now it's starting to kind of go down this way a little bit. Um, so now it doesn't get very much sun because there's a huge juniper. So when the sun is a little bit more upright, it does get a tiny bit of afternoon sun through this area, but not a, not a lot. Not enough to like hurt the Japanese maple and that sort of thing. There is a hedge of little lime punch hydrangeas that lines right behind the boxwoods in this area as well. But in the fall, this Hakana Kloa, so like deeper in the fall, this will develop a kind of bright pink color. It's gonna be good. I'm so excited about it. And it's just such a soft grass and you can see how it just kind of is gently moving. We have the most gentle breeze right now and it's just such a graceful grass. I knew that that's what I wanted to put in that space. It was just a matter of getting a hold of the plants. So anyway, got a hold of them, got them planted. I'm excited about it. And then our boxwoods. There they are just finishing off our hedge. So they're all different shapes. So of course it looks wonky right now. They'll need to fill in, but I use this little stick right here that I pulled out of the lilac as my spacing guide. <laughs> Cause I can't remember exactly how far I spaced these boxwoods. So I just went from like the middle of this boxwood to the middle of this boxwood, the ones that were already planted. And that's what I kind of maintained. I maintained that spacing throughout the whole thing. So it's not, <laughs> it's not perfect but it doesn't matter. In the end, you won't be able to tell. They'll all be kind of just one mass. And I did pull the lamium back a little bit because I think it makes it look cleaner, more tidy to have, not have it popping through the front. But I planted a bunch of starts in this area. So hopefully those take off. This is where our flush is though for our drip system. Every day, uh, our whole irrigation system actually it flushes uh, in this spot. You can see how wet it looks right there. So it's like perma wet in this area which I'm surprised this lilac is still alive. But anyway, that's just how it's been for who knows how long, but I hope the lamium fills in. Either way, we should probably mulch in this area. I was fairly careful to not make a huge mess, uh, even with the shovel, but um, I feel like, you know, I need to tidy up. I'll probably bring some over here sometime soon. And the rest is over here. All right, so I put seven lambs here right here. So I've got a purple Veronica. There's white flocks that you can't really see right now. We've cut it back. So white flocks will be in this space, the tall purple delphiniums, purple Veronica, a pink, this is a Mary Rose. Oh, so pretty. And then we'll have that beautiful weight right here. And right now I know it looks like kind of lined up here, but I'm gonna put something else right back behind it. So I left that space. We've got Midnight Masquerade Penstemon. We've got the Raspberry Beret Echinacea, which I'm hoping this is a pretty wet area. It's just, I don't know what it is about the soil over here, but it hangs on to moisture. You can see the echinacea are not loving it. So we'll see how they fare through winter, but I would like to pop a couple more right up front here to finish off that grouping. And then we've got a Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. There's a Brandywine Viburnum. I mean, we could just keep going on and on, but look at our summer plants, you guys. I just, I don't have the heart to do it. I cannot pull them. We've got Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, Supertunia Bordeaux. Look at that diamond frost, incredible. And then there's a Supertunia Sharon over here. Nope, not Sharon. This is the Raspberry Blast, right? How come I can't remember the name of that? Anyway, it just, it looks so pretty. And it just seems wasteful to pull it out for fall plants. I'm just gonna leave them for now. Oh geez, they're just, it's like the cooler nights have just made them come alive again. But then I had three left and I popped them right here. So in this space, which this is the least developed space of the whole west side, like this end is kind of de developed. We've popped a few things in here and honestly, most of this stuff came here this year. Most everything. I think we had three shrubs in this area, right? This spring to start off with before we started moving stuff around and uh, transplanting stuff from behind the gazebo. Anyway, yeah, not a ton in here. So I'm excited to see what this space does next year. Anyway, there's the three ladies mantle right there. And I might broaden this drift out eventually, but I might just wait until they kind of put on a little size and then I can just divide them and move them. 
um, and kind of spread them out a little bit. But what I'm really kind of going for is a few repeat plants, but not in the same shapes or quantity, but I just want to see like some purple delphiniums through the whole thing some ladies mantle through the whole thing just for that color and that texture and then we're just popping in other stuff all over the place so anyway around it we've got some flocks um which you know looking kind of sad at the moment um and then we've got some stokes aster here which these were itty bitty when we planted them they're looking really pretty and we've got some ajuga in here there's a glow girl spirea which is burning and it looked it looks great early in the season I think it needs iron, I'm not sure, we'll see. I'm gonna treat it next year, see what happens. If it does it again, we'll probably pull it out, put something better in there. And you guys, that is it for projects today. It was really fun to be working here on the west side of the house. I feel like I've just been focusing, I have been focusing so much on the south garden this year. We've added so much out there just because everything, well, you guys know there's a lot of area up here that's kind of in limbo around our house so i haven't wanted to make too many permanent plant decisions i mean i don't mind moving plants around and i do it all the time but i don't want to have to do it in every area of our garden um, but i can see boxwoods behind the hartley so i just moved a bunch back there benny's guys last week so at the very end of the, the week they based on our drawing and measurements they strung everything out like they marked everything and then they let us live with it through the weekend which i'm so glad they did it because we shifted things a bit we moved like the whole formation we're doing behind the hartley a little bit closer to the hartley um and then we we just have messed with a little bit made some of the walkways a little bit wider some a little bit more narrow and then they're going to start in tomorrow so i'm hoping i'm hoping by next week at some point we have boxwoods in the ground back there wouldn't that be awesome? I'm so excited. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video today and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.